Neha Gupta is a two-time international best-selling author, top 100 teen expert around the world, TEDx speaker, and serial entrepreneur, creating the Shortcuts Empire on helping students get into their dream school. Over the last 12 years, she has built elite private tutors college shortcuts, medical shortcuts, law school shortcuts, grad school shortcuts, and MBA shortcuts. With the mission to serve families and make parents' lives easier every day, while 95% of families get into their dream school. She has helped tens of thousands of students get into their dream school and won't stop until every child gets that acceptance letter. She has built a school in Africa, been endorsed by Dr. Shafali Sabari, the world leading parenting expert by Oprah, and families around the world interview to work with one of their companies for limited spots. She has been featured on ABC as an expert for teenagers, NBC, CBS, The Washington Post, Parents Magazine, and even Coined, the female that helps students get six figures in scholarships, according to Student Loan Hero. Welcome to her latest creation, Dream School TV, where she brings in the best experts and guests on admissions and gives the latest trends and tips. Take it away. Hi everyone, this is Neha Gupta. Welcome to Dream School TV. I am so excited about my guest today and let me share a little story about why. It was about five years ago when I was watching Oprah and many of you don't know this, but I watched Oprah ever since I was a teenager. Actually, she's the main reason why all of this exists because my dream was always to have a TV show like her. Well, I was watching it about four or five years ago and this guest came on. And I remember looking over at my mom when I was watching and I said, mom, one day I will meet this woman and we will do something together. Well, today is that day. I'm so excited to announce today, Dr. Shafali Sabari, who has written The Conscious Parent and so many other books and her latest book, The Awakened Family. So I'm so excited to have her on. She's been on Oprah multiple times. She runs an incredible event called Evolve that I've attended. I'm actually wearing her shirt from her event called Conscious because she's all about conscious parenting and how we can really shift the paradigm of parenting from what it was to what it can be today. And I truly love everything that's she's doing and in turn she loves what we're doing here at College Shortcuts and all of our admissions consulting we do across the country. So I'm very excited to announce and welcome Dr. Shafali. Thank you so much for having me. So one of the questions I've got Dr. Shafali is I'm just curious you know when I see the relationship between the parents and the teenagers and sometimes it feels like the parents are nagging the teenager there just seems to be a lot of stress in the parent to teen relationship. Now that you have a teenager, and obviously you've got a lot of experience with the parenting world as a psychologist, what are your views specifically around parenting and teenagers and the relationship? I'm just curious what your thoughts are. Well, it's one of the most complex stages, I think, for a parent to help navigate for themselves and for their teen because the teen years are such a melange and melee of different developmental stages. So they're very much children. They haven't yet developed all the skills and faculties of executive thinking. I mean, no adult has either, but uh, definitely a teenager hasn't. So they're very much like toddlers, preteens, they tantrum, they're impetuous, they're impulsive, they have fantastical thinking, but then they're also not kids anymore, right? They, they want to be autonomous, they have vision, they want to assert their autonomy, but they're both these things at the same time. So for a parent, it gets very, very confusing how much to push and how much to nurture. How, and we're always nurturing, but how much to shelter and how much to push. And it's a real challenge for the parent. And I always then help parents attune to their children. Like you can only do parenting ultimately moment by moment. And you can only do every kid as who that kid is. So you and I can be experts and come and help parents, but ultimately our greatest gift to parents is helping them understand who their kid is. Not the kid as the kid in mainstream should be or the kid according to the SAT norms. Right. It's who your kid is. And the greatest gift we give parents, I think, is helping parents manage their expectations from what their ideal is, from what they were, to who their children is. Now, this seems like such a cliche, know who your kid is. This is the hardest thing in parenting because we're so pulled by culture and we're so pulled by fear to shepherd our children according to the masses that this is where we have conflict. And at some stage, every parent is going to have to confront the truth of this is who my kid is, 
This is how much I've pushed my kid to not be who my kid is. And now I have the choice to either release the control, which is all out of fear, or to just keep going, but let me not pretend like I'm doing it for the kid. I love that. You know, when I love what we do with our admissions consulting, when we help students from undergrad through any graduate program, is that we're helping students to find their passion and we're helping them to find their path. And we found over and over that schools are not asking them these types of questions. Like, what are your interests? They're rarely getting asked this. Do you have any thoughts about this whole concept of finding your passion and how our students are not getting that kind of question in their life? Because the entire focus is on the grade and the achievement, whereas the focus should be on their natural unfolding. But no parent has the patience or the courage to allow for that. I mean, like you said, I'm a mother of a 15 and a half year old, almost 16 year old. I see my own fear of what culture has placed in me. The only difference is I know that it's fear. I know that it's superimposed. I know it's artificial. I know it's culture. I know it's not real. But for another parent who's not trained, they will believe the fear is real. So So when they push their kid, they're doing it really out of love. But I always tell parents, you know, don't love your kids so much because the love is messing it all up. Because that's when the caring seems like caring, but it's actually controlling the parents' fear. It's very complex to raise, to help raise, nobody's raising anybody, but to help raise a child as their true self. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it, I see with my own daughter, I have to wait for her to be motivated from her own self. You cannot push a kid to be implicitly motivated and then tell the kid, you know, be motivated from inside. (laughs) You can't motivate a kid to be motivated from inside. These are evolutions that need to occur naturally. And some kids take a longer time and parents can't bear that. So they push the kid. And then, like you said, the kid can run on the parent's team for only so long. Correct. And then what? I love that. You know, one of the big things we keep seeing over and over, our parents are having such a hard time motivating their student. And that's the thing about motivation is that they're trying so hard to get them to do certain things or put them into this or that. And the one thing I keep seeing over and over, and I hate to say this, guys, for everyone that's watching, but I keep seeing where... You know, the parents may have been too involved or too pushing with their student and their student never really got to ask or think about what they truly actually wanted. And they end up in their later 30s and 40s doing something that they absolutely don't love. They end up literally sitting on their parents' couch and they're actually unsure of what they want to do. They're like almost going through a midlife crisis because they're finally realizing they're not that happy. What are your thoughts around that and that whole stress that we keep seeing over and over? So the point is not to plow your kid through till they're 30 and then, then, then too bad. It's really to slow it down now. It evolves till they're 30 and then it's ready to come out. See, we're doing it all wrong. We need to allow, but nobody has time to allow. And the culture has driven us crazy and we allow ourselves to go crazy. And so this is the way, this is why you and I need to do the work we do. You know, one of the big things that we've noticed as well is that with this age of social media, teens comparing themselves to others, feeling inadequate, lacking self-worth, feeling unsure of who they really truly are in the process, how do you feel about the importance of mentorship? What is it about having a teenager and having a mentor or someone there or a coach that can help you in this process versus having the parent. As one of the top world psychologists, why is it so important to have someone closer to your child's age around them as they do? I cannot tell you how much I advocate for outsourcing after your kid is 14, 15. So right now I've outsourced my daughter's tutoring, you know, a little bit of coaching to some young man uh, and I give him tasks to do, like talk to her this way, talk to her, because the parent at this point needs to back off. So it needs to come from another voice. I suggest to him, he'll do whatever he wants, but it cannot come from us. That's why the work you do is so great because you can step in where a parent cannot step in because it's not the parent's role to step in anymore because the child needs to evolve from a place of authenticity but they look at the parent as imposing. So they can't be authentic from the parent's side. They can be with with a peer, it can come out more naturally. So it's so important for parents to outsource 
at this age. It's it's the natural way for teens to go toward people who are more closer to their age, not to the parents. You know what's crazy? I totally agree. I mean, the thing is, we used to live in a world, you know, I look back to my own heritage, obviously yours as well, Dr. Shafali, but, you know, just the fact that, you know, we used to grow up in tribes. Like, I think back to the way my parents were raised, and they had not just their parents around, they had aunts and uncles around, they had friends around. There was just this whole range of different people and experts around them at all times. And now, today, people are completely isolated, and they have no idea what they're doing in so many ways. So, I just feel like the tribe mentality is so powerful and it makes such a difference. Absolutely. And there was a reason for it because we burn out at some point. Our influence burns out. Our children have heard it all. They tune us out. They see us as only fear ridden, which is true. We are. So they don't want to hear us anymore. So instead of pushing ourselves on them, let's bring in fresher faces, different voices, newer people to help influence our children. But that means our par- the parent needs to release and parents have a hard time releasing. Yeah, you know, one of the biggest things that I've also seen is that parents, one of the hardest parts of the process, honestly, when it comes to working with us, we interview every family that we work with because there's over 5 million students that are applying to either undergraduate programs, upwards of graduate programs in the United States alone. And so we only work with a barely a half, a half, a half percentage of that. So we have to interview to make sure that we can actually assist those students. And I will tell you, you know, one of the hardest things we see over and over with parents, they'll ask a bunch of questions about the details, but in the end, it's really about letting go of the control and just being able to say yes to getting help. You know, I don't know if you have any viewpoints on that, but I know that getting help can be so powerful, especially if you want, as I call it, the shortcut to things. Parents need help. That's what Evolve is about. They need conscious help. They need deep dive help, transformational help. And here we are together in this one place doing this together. All right. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Dr. Shafali, you don't know this, but you have been one of my biggest mentors in my own life. I look up to you all the time. I'm very excited. And just so you know, everyone, I attend a lot of Dr. Shafali's events. You know, I truly believe that if we can shift the way we look at parenting, if we can look at other people around us to help with our next generation, people that are close to their age, that can help mentor them, develop their path, get them into the right schools. I really do believe that we can change the way the next leaders are for our next generation. So I'm really excited about this. If you guys are interested in working with us, please feel free to go to our websites, collegeshortcuts.com. If you're looking at higher level programs, we've got med school shortcuts, law school shortcuts, grad school shortcuts, and MBA shortcuts.com. So anything that you're needing assistance with, we know that as parents, you can't do it all. That's just the truth of the matter. And so that is why companies like mine exist. And I love that Dr. Shafali supports everything that we're doing and loves that outsourcing for a lot of parenting can make all the difference in the relationship with your child. Thank you so much for tuning in. This is Neha Gupta, founder of Dream School TV. See you next time. Bye.